everyone, let's take a look at the quizzes feature that has recently been added to Google Forms. What this is going to do for you is, quite frankly, save you a bit of time. It will automatically grade quizzes. It allows you to enter an answer key and assign points to your questions. So it automatically then will grade the test for you and instantly give your students feedback. It can also direct them to different resources if they need to review any content. So let's jump right in and take a look at how we can save you some time. I'm in Google Drive. I'm going to click New to open a new Google Form. And incidentally, you can apply the, uh, the quizzes feature to any new form as well as any form you're already using for a quiz, so anything that's already existing. It's just simply a toggle switch that you turn on and off to create a form. Let's give our form a name. And we're going to jump right up into settings. And this is the point at which whether it was new or an already existing form, you could turn on the quizzes. You'll notice there's a new tab up here at the top called quizzes. We're going to click on that. And it's as simple as saying make this a quiz. So now this form is considered a quiz. So you have a few more options here. You can release the grades immediately, meaning as soon as a student is done taking the test, they can click on a link and receive their score and their feedback or you can choose to release the grades all at once to all students after you've had a chance to review them. However, keep in mind you will not be able to adjust any grades. All you are going to be able to do is view and review them. You have a few different options down here and each one of these just simply turns on and off by clicking the check box. You can show them what their missed questions are. Those will show up to a student in red with an X next to it. You can have them see what their correct answers are, which will show up in green with a check mark next to it. And you can let them know what the point value were, was for each of their questions. So you can use all, none, any combination of these things to show your students when they are done with their quiz. You can click save at this point, but while we're in settings, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at some of the other settings that have already existed that you would maybe want to pay attention to when you are creating a test or a quiz. So let's start with the general tab. If you restrict your respondents to within your school's domain, you can then check the box that says collect email addresses. So it will automatically record what email address was logged in to take the test. This can be both a security feature, meaning you know that which student was logged in to take this test, so a student can't take another test unless they know that student's email credentials. It also eliminates the problem of students perhaps not entering their email addresses in correctly and therefore they wouldn't receive their scores. So you have to collect an email address in some way, shape, or form for the grades to be sent to the students. So you either need to check this box or you need to add a field in your form where students enter their email address. Because it's a quiz, I'm also going to limit the responses to one per student so that they don't get a redo. If this is a review or something, you may choose to let them retake the test as many times as they want to until they get it right and they're prepared for the test. I just want to call your attention to the response receipts. This has nothing to do with the grading the quiz. This is just simply giving the student a list of what their selections were for each question. That's all there is to it. It has nothing to do with grading. Let's take one quick peek here at the presentations tab. You can opt in to show the progress bar or shuffle the question order so students get questions in different in a different order than the student next to them. But the thing I really want to bring your attention to is the confirmation message. Because clicking on a link in order to get their score at the end of their test is going to be new to students, you may want to add a confirmation message congratulating them on the end of their quiz, as well as letting them know to view, click the View Your Score link to see how, what grade they received. So once we've set all of our settings, we're going to click on the Save button. And then we can get right down to Entering Our Questions. We'll enter our first question.
and I will caution you that quizzes will only work on three types of questions, the multiple choice, the check boxes, and the drop down. If you want to, if your test or quiz includes short answer or paragraph, paragraph questions, you are going to want to use an add-on for sheets such as Fluberu that will allow you to manually grade certain questions. Quizzes in Google Forms at this time will only automatically grade, does not give you the option to manually grade anything, and can only work on these three types of questions. So for the the purposes of this example, we're going to leave this as a multiple choice and we'll begin to enter our answers. And once we've entered our answers in, you'll notice there's a new link here at the bottom and that's called Answer Key. So we're going to click on the Answer Key. So we can begin to let quizzes know how we want it to grade our quiz. So click on that. You can see it. The first thing it asks us to do is to indicate which is the correct answer. Simply click on it. You can assign the question a point value. And then you'll notice down here there's a thing called Add Answer Feedback. You, this is certainly optional. It's not required to add answer feedback. You have the option of entering feedback for both incorrect answers and correct answers. You'll see there's a link here. You can choose to add a URL address in there that will direct students to a website or a document in Google Forms that will allow them to review the information if they've missed that question. So let's go ahead and enter our feedback and we'll enter in our incorrect answer feedback and then we'll go ahead and enter our correct answer feedback and of course you can choose to enter just incorrect answer feedback and not correct answer feedback both or neither. <clears throat> we'll click Save and now you can see and we're still in our answer key view. We've assigned a point value, we've indicated which answer is correct, and we've entered both correct and incorrect feedback. We'll return to editing the question. I'm going to choose to make this question required. I don't want students to be able to skip questions. I want them to at least attempt to answer each one. You can of course leave that on or off as your preference. Let's take a look at just one more question because I would just want to show you the difference between multiple choice and check. Since this is a checkbox question, of course, the first thing we're going to do is make it a checkbox. And of course, the big difference between checkbox questions and multiple choice questions are students can only select one answer for a multiple choice, but they can select multiple answers for a checkbox question. So let's go ahead and put our question in and we'll enter our answers. Once our answers are entered, course we're going to check required but we may want to do one more thing since this is a checkbox question we may want to add just a little prompt for students so that they know they can enter more than one answer to the question so you can certainly word that in any way you choose but just so they know that they can select more than one so their chances of getting the question right are a little greater so once again we're going to click on our answer key we're going to indicate which, which answers are correct, assign it a point value, and one thing I really want to point out to you is that forms will only grade the question completely right or completely wrong. It will not give partial credit if a student, say, gets four out of the five correct answers. That question is still going to be a zero and it's still going to be wrong. So just plan for that when you are creating your tests. Once again, we're going to click on our feedback. I'll enter my feedback here and this time I'm also going to add a URL address in here so that if students get this question wrong, they can go and review this information. 
give them a little prompt there. This is what they're going to see on the link. I'm going to click Add to add that link. As this is exactly how it's going to appear to the student. And we'll click Save and we're done. Now at this point we'll just continue to add our questions. Once we've entered all of our questions and set all the answer keys for them, we can scroll back to the top of our test and go ahead and send that to our students. So we'll click on the Send button. We'll enter their email addresses. And we'll give it a subject. And enter a message. and click send and they will receive the quiz. So let's see what it looks like from a student standpoint. I'm going to flip over to my student account. Here I am in my student email and here comes our new message. So we'll as a student click on the quiz and we're going to take the quiz very quickly. We'll click fill out the form. Here's our quiz. It's telling me as how we're logged in because we have it automatically collecting the email addresses. So let's go ahead and answer our questions here. And I want to at least get one wrong. By the way, this is the drop down question, how it looks to students. So I want to get this one wrong so you can at least see what that looks like. We'll click Submit. And here is where the, the message appears that we created for the completion. And the student clicks view your score. They instantly get their feedback. They can see what their total score was. Here's correct answers as well as our messages that we have put in. And if we scroll to the bottom, the question we received wrong you can see appears in red. The answer the student gave is listed as well as the correct answer. We also have our link in our message. If we click on our link it's going to take us to a site where we can review the information. You could also link this to um, a, a file you have in your Google Drive or your classroom. So let's swing back over to the teacher view. Here we are and this indicates how many students have completed their quiz. We can see all of our students have finished their tests. So let's go ahead and look at responses. Of course, you don't have to wait until all of your students have finished their tests. You can view responses at any time. In responses, we have two views, summary and individual. So if we click on individual, the student is identified by email address. And you can scroll from student to student using the arrow keys. Okay, and we can go down and see exactly what students answered for every question if we needed to drill down and see what the heck they're thinking. Let's take a look at the summary view now. So I'm going to flip on the summary tab and we get quite a bit of analytics here about the group as a whole. So here are uh, the range of scores. You can see how many students received which scores. It'll list the question that was missed the most. We can see in this case only one student got it right, so that might be a, a cue to us that we need to reteach that information. We get a general summary of each student's score, and then it drills down to question by question how many students answered, or what each student answered, and how many answered in which way. So you kind of get a graph of. Uh, the content and, and how it was handled. Again, we can always, if you prefer to view your results in a spreadsheet, you just simply click Create Spreadsheet and just like all forms always do, then you can view your information in a spreadsheet and that way you can manipulate it. Um, when you're done accepting responses, you simply turn this back off so they can't share their test with anybody else. And that's really, in a nutshell, how to go ahead and automatically grade quizzes in Google Form. I certainly hope this saves you some time.